Good morning, Melbourne. Wakey, wakey. Wake up, Melbourne. Jason Lauren. Turn it up. Start your morning the right way. It's gonna be great. Gonna be a good day. This is Jason Lauren on Melbourne's Nova 100. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to your Wednesday. Good morning, <laughs> Melbourne. How are we? I'm good. How are you? I do well. I do well. Major dramas in the city already this morning. Well, the roads are already blocked off this morning for everyone out there starting their morning commute, Clint. Clarendon Street yes. near the convention centre. Good morning. Closed it's a big off. protest. The biggest protest we've seen in Melbourne in 20 years. 25,000 people expected to hit the streets. I think what's more concerning is there's a... Is it a weapons museum? Yeah. It's a weapons exhibition. Yeah. Like, I'm all up for the boat show, but mm. I don't know if I want to go down the convention centre to watch mm. the big red nuclear button well, and how it works. You know what I mean? Apparently a lot of people do want to go and look at it. Yeah, that, those people worry me. Yeah. Well, there's 25,000 people expected to be out the front. It's called the um, Land Forces Exhibition. Yeah, right. Is it a military exhibition? Yeah, it, it's 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 weapons development, uh, development effectively. Right. You know what? Let's go to someone who has more authority. Your old housemate. Okay. <laughs> Christina Hearn from Channel 9's Today Show. Good morning. Morning, Chris. Good morning, guys. Oh, up bright and early oh, this morning. Just... It's all happening in the city. Yeah, it is, and I can tell you that uh, police have made the first move down here because if you're trying to drive through Clarendon Street past Crown and the Exhibition Centre, you can't. They've blockaded both sides. They've got dozens of police on either side. So you can't get through, so strike one for police. Um, how many people are expected to turn up to the protest? Because there was some conversation this morning from our very uh, <laughs> wonderful news reader who said Distinguished. that there might have been 250,000 <laughs> people turning up, just, Christine. Just drop a zero. <laughs> He's never been very good with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 25,000 they're expecting because there's a whole heap of uh, activist groups that are joining together, like the pro-Palestinian protesters, Extinction Rebellion. So they're all coming together. And uh, police are saying they're expecting, uh, they're preparing for the biggest operation since the World Economic Forum protest in wow. the year 2000. So if look, they've a- come prepared. If they're coming that prepared, surely there must be a fear that they're expecting violence then. Well, they would have, they would certainly, oh, you can just hear the protesters have yeah. started up. Look, they certainly would have uh, intel. And look, we are the protest capital of Australia. Mm. Uh, so, you know, they're better to be prepared uh, than not be prepared. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can't get close here. Don't come here unless you have to, it would be my advice. No, right, what. well, you stay safe there, Christine, and hopefully the yeah. protests remain safe for We're just down the road in Clarendon Street, yeah, Dale. So if you need to seek some shelter. Yeah, where you bunker this morning, spray. all right? Bring me a coffee. Wish okay. me luck. Good okay. luck. Bye-bye. Stay safe. She ever cop the pepper spray at a protest? I dare say she has. She's the front line of reporting. Yeah, she's, right. she's the best reporter, isn't she? Oh, isn't so, she? so is Clint. I saw him on the news the other night. They crossed to him. At his desk. Oh. I heard you got reporter of the week on the cheap seats last night. Oh, thanks for spoiling the 6.20 break. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard it. Tune anyway, in at six twenty to see what happens. To I don't want to go over Surprise! old news at six twenty. <laughs> oh, you're going to pat yourself on the back, lady. Yeah. Trust no, you to be the one who no, brings no. it up. <laughs> yes, yes, that's you right. Were. That's that's right. All right. What there a time go. to be alive, and what a time to be a reporter in this fine now, city. Now I don't know why you got that award though, but I did <laughs> okay. hear that you. I'll won. give you a hot tip. It's because Mel Trasina it works here at Nova. Works here as well. I reckon it's an inside job. When we say it's that a, he accidentally put an extra zero on the protest numbers, you might win again next week. Something for this. Accolade? I don't know. Employment. Okay. Yeah, let's be happy with that. Hey, uh, we've got a huge show coming up today, guys. We do. We are giving someone the chance to win $100,000 with our $100,000 minute. Joe will be joining us soon. All she's got to do is push the buzzer in the minute that she thinks is worth the cash. And if she's right, she'll be walking away with a hundred k. Joe cool. sounds like a bit of a firecracker too. Sounds Does like a good she? time. Yeah. I reckon we should tempt her with a few things. I don't to think see. We refer to her as a good time, but uh, she will be oh, she, joining us. She li- likes a good time. Okay. Why can't you refer she's to her as a good time? Oh, she sounds like a good time. Oh, just normally in lad chat, it's like, oh yeah, Lauren, she was a good time. Oh she, no, it was. But this isn't lad chat. This and is it's, the radio, and, and it's I'm present right tense. <laughs> she is a good time. She is a good time. Not Joe, was. if you're listening in the car, you're a good time. You're a good time, sis. Can't wait to have a good time with you, Joe. Oh, no, uh, that's too far. Not only that, uh, 
We are going to be joined by an expert this morning after 7.30. This is an expert in something that is around Melbourne. Relevant to all of us, I would say. I would say we're all scared of it. Mm. Um, We're going to dive into that. I mean, the experts chat with the dishwasher expert went off. I was genuinely surprised how many people spoke to me about the dishwasher expert. It blew people's minds. We should uh, get a little replay clip and put a special podcast up and compare the numbers of our show to a dishwasher expert interview. It sounds mundane. But it was fascinating. I would say, favourite interviews, dishwasher guy, then Matt Damon. Oh, 100%. In that order. Let's get into it. Oh, it's Clint got a surprise for you at 620. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> this is number 100. Like a vision of love that seems to be true. God, that's bringing another back the night, Thursday dream. night, uni night. That got me up and about. Oh, this is Nova 100. Good morning. You are on the air with Jace and Lauren. Used to be $2 spirits. Where? Uh, Thursday night. Just in Queensland. Friday's nightclub. Our debutante ball. The after party, that was the first song that played at our really? dead ball. That's how, really? That's how yeah. crusty and old I was. I reckon they banged it out a few times back at, um, I am. Back at Room and Cheers. And, oh, yeah. Oh, Friday night at Boutique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 80s night. It was a reg. Remember how cheap drinks were? Yeah. I'm like, you need $2 drinks. Yeah, but you used to also do, at where we used to go, this, their barman and have a yo-yo in one hand and you had to pick which hand. And if the yo-yo was in that hand, you got your drink for free. I where love that. that? At Cheers. No. At Toss the Boss. Yeah, where was that? In Hawthorne. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, Case, uh, Casey's Nightclub. Yeah. Uh, Ling Ling's in Bali. You roll a dice, and if you pick the number, you but drink for free. that's too hard. He would just, the guy behind the bar with the girls would just, like, one that's hand was closed and one hand was yeah. very open. You Quite a see few the in me, and I asked to inspect the dice, because I think <laughs> this is a stitch <laughs> it's up. rigged. Here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, good old days. Guys, we go to bed quite early, or I do anyway, and quite What's often early? you, well, I'm talking last night, it was like 8.30. That's late it was, for me. I saw half of the block, and then off, off I toddled to bed. I watched the second last episode of The Perfect Couple and then fell asleep at about- Is it good? 20. Oh, it's so good. Nicole Kidman, Liv Schreiber. And it's quick? Naomi Watts' ex-husband. Six episodes. Okay. Good Great. question. Is it quick? Yeah. Because I like a quick one. So do I. I don't like when it drags. I was in the infrared sauna last night watching it on my phone. Oh. Perfect. 45 minutes went past like that. Good stuff. Well, I woke this morning, and I'm sure you guys have experienced the same thing. Sometimes you wake to a flood of text messages that you've missed mm. at around about, let's say, 8.30, 9 o'clock. When your phone was deeply on do not disturb. Oh, exactly. And the nature of these text messages sort of sent me a little bit. I got a bit of paranoia. Uh, what were you thinking, <gasps> Red One? I can't believe you did that, Red Another. Uh-oh. Uh- I knew it would happen one day. Uh oh. And that from was my, Dad. That was mine. <laughs> congratulations. Your dad? Yeah. Something okay. in what on earth? Well, I woke to many DMs happened. saying, Did you see the news about Clint? And I was like, No. What's he done? I you, mean, you. Did you get done with your pants down? Were a star last night. It wasn't a photo of you out there, was it? Because just say it's deep fake. That's what everyone's doing. Well, which photo? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> just say they're all deep fake. Yeah, that bloke in South Australia. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that wasn't him. That was a deep fake. Deep oh. fake. It's a good, I did deep a good job, though, didn't <laughs> Great they? deep fake. Anyway, Clint won an award last night, Stanners. Shall you do the honours or do you want uh, me to? On a rival television network as well. I haven't heard it yet, but here it is. This was on Channel 10's The Cheap Seats. But no one went further for the story this week than Channel 9's Clint Stanaway. A win for Hawthorne fans tonight with more flights just announced to help get supporters to Adelaide on Friday. Clint Stanaway is at his computer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Clint? Clint Stanaway. More like Clint Stan to stay. <laughs> I'm glad Clint is at his computer because he can now Google seek.com to get a different job. What are you doing, Clint? <laughs> Let's see how Clint did. You got one at uh, 2.10 in the afternoon as well. Over at Qantas, things are a little bit more expensive. That always happens. Your session has expired. Got to refresh the screen. Here we go. This is live television. Wow. Great. Job, Award-winning stuff, Stannis. So what was I, Reporter of the Week? You were Reporter of the Week wow. for doing a live cross from your desk, trying to find out. The- I hey. saw it live, and I actually <laughs> lolled. Paul and I laughed out loud. I was like, what is he doing? I know. If only they had some sort of giant screen in the studio he could bring nope, the flights up desk? on. his desk. Your desk looked a bit vanilla, too. Well, that was actually not my desk. Right? Oh. Secrets you lied exposed. to the audience. I oh. did. Oh. Yeah, it was a lie. It was a fib. 
That was the operations manager. Do you know what I, I was, was doing? I was expecting some posters of some girls or something on well, that, you know, partition. Well, on when clothes. the camera zoomed in to <laughs> the Qantas. Men for all seasons calendar on your desk. When the camera zoomed into the Qantas page, all I was doing was looking for little open tabs, the tabs. at the top to see what else he was looking oh, at. Oh, that'll, that'll, that, the tabs that'll all, make you that'll come Only fans? Yeah. Not, oh, at, not work. at work. Not oh, you no. and TJ. Chompers. My deep fake's been using my computer. <laughs> hey, uh, guys. Yes, Jace. Ever hurt yourself on the job? I don't. Um, I don't mean th- this job. No, I think I know the job you're talking about. On the there was a, bench. there was a. I'm, I'm not going to say this person's name. I know what you're going to say. Very famous former footballer. No, that's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> who um, who broke it? Is Willie on the job? Can mm. you break it? Apparently, Lauren, you can break it. I didn't think it had a bone. Neither did I. I yeah. mean, it doesn't have a bone. No. Have you heard this story, Brody? Executive producer Brody, did he break his schlong? He broke it. <laughs> How? Ow. Well, How? because it, you know, it. Was it in a sling? It's snappable. Do you yeah. put it in but plaster? I don't know if I'd want to sign that. Oh, you'd be out of action <laughs> for a while. Yeah. You wouldn't go around the classroom. Not taking that. that. No, side, God, no. No, you wouldn't draw a funny <laughs> face on that. No. 13, 24, 10. Have you hurt yourself on the job? Or maybe you know someone who has. You're listening to um, us thanks to What If? It is Aussie for Travel. You're listening to um, names. us. Thanks for joining us. What are our names? Steve? Steve? <laughs> hey, guys, I want to go to well court. Done. We're going to court. Court? A senator. Senator or a senator? A sanitizer? Senator. Politician. Let's call him a politician. Let's call him a senator. Are we doing this today, are we? Well, you're the one that can't speak. I don't know why you (laughs) get taken out on us. She's got a point. I'd have a go at you, but I don't know your name. A former chief of staff to a US senator Hmm. claims he was uh, forced... To perform sexual favours. Forced? Yes. That has left him riddled with back and hip injuries. What? In the papers, he said he suffered back injuries while having to twist and contort as he performed oral sex on the senator in a car. Contort? As a result, he has done a few discs and has a collapsed hip. There's many issues with this story. Mm. Here's a Constantino. Contortion. And he was forced? He's, he's a magician. He's oh, a magician. He's a magician. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll just make it disappear. He won't twist it. Okay. Oh, in a car. <laughs> in a car. Wow. In a car. I mean, how would toit in there. Bro, our executive producer Brody was trying to explain to me that, earlier this morning how this could happen. Like, how's he done his hip and his disc? Oh, he was trying to twist. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. Are you making this up or is this part of the story? abdomen to reach back and over? And as he did that. What was she driving? Yeah, he was trying to just get down to it no, while still remaining no. seated to try and get down and to the area, and then it popped. And it what? He's suing her? Yeah. So she was driving and he's leaned over the centre console? Yes. Centre console will get you. Depending on, remember the old gear shift to be in the I'm way? I'm just imagining, you know, those new um, cameras on the bridges that take photo into oh, the car and people been get so many people texting caught on their phones. On their phones. There's so many people caught. That would be an interesting photo. You ever done in a car? Mm, yeah, once. <laughs> men, men, men. Was it a backseat job? I would absolutely put my back out if I was tried these days. Was this horse and carriage days or yeah, like, was it an actual seriously. car? <laughs> horse was and it carriage. a backseat job? The details can remain private, Clint. I think I've offered you enough information by saying oh, yes. Or was the front seat reclined? Was it Let a your ute? imagination run Oh, oh yes. <laughs> it was a ute. She was using the tray. Guys, I was fun in my 20s, all right? I really was a good time. <laughs> in my 20s. 13, 24, 10. Was she a good time? No, no, no. We're asking, have you hurt yourself on the <laughs> job? Let's go to Craig. Morning, Craig. Good morning, number one uh, uh, breakfast team. That's all right. Oh. We even stumble over it too. Don't worry. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> morning. No, just, just remembering, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, I have, I have hurt myself uh, on a work site. Uh, I was climbing down out of my truck, uh, working in the concrete industry, uh, construction industry. Cra- Craig, and it, Craig, yes. I'm so sorry to stop you there. We're doing Have You Hurt Yourself? On the workbench. On the job. 
on the job, not at the job. Like as in, yeah. as in. Well, how, how do you know his story might get sexy on the job? Craig, was there yourself, anything sexy Craig? about your well, story? Not like the senator or you know the bloke who, who that was, but yeah. I have injured myself. I did have a steel picket go through my leg. Oh, oh that's not sexy. And that on the job. Yeah, at work. On the, on the on the job. Uh-huh. Not Craig, on the job, don't, don't on the let job. them dishearten you because you actually hurt yourself at work. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a compo call line. This is. Oh, Craig put a metal rod through his leg. On the job. Actually, on the job. Not oh, right. On He's the not job. working there. Because I'm sure there'd be a few nurses ringing up saying people have rocked up with a few metal rods in places they shouldn't be. Renee, hurt yourself on the job? <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Uh, no, it wasn't me. It never was a friend is. of mine. I love no, that. Never is, never it was a friend anyway. of mine. Never is. Someone I knew. Yeah. Um, anyway, so they were doing it on a, a fold-up massage t- table. Oh, There's no. a masseuse. Yep. And uh, it folded in half <gasps> and his testicle got stuck <gasps> in the half that folded up. Oh! Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. Hang on, hang on. The table folded. Do you need to hit yeah, that again? The, ta- the table folded as they were doing it and oh. uh, his testicle got stuck in the... The bit between where it was folded it fold, up. It, the, the, it fold, folded, folded, folded into the testicle. That would have made a very funny situation not what? funny very quickly. Can no, I when the table oh. fell, it would have been like, oh, this is funny. And then you'd be like, oh, this no, isn't no, no, funny. It isn't. It isn't. And then it's like that oh scene in Tell Me About Mary. Like, you got to reverse the track. When I hear stories you'd have like to open this, the table again. it makes me feel a bit sick. How do you guys take it? Well, that does, does it make me? you feel like that makes me feel sick hearing that. And I, I don't even have testicles. The, yeah, I grab mine. In case you're wondering. You, gra- you grab them. Yeah. It just takes your breath away a little bit. <gasps> Be like in like a bear I've, trap. I've got sweaty palms thinking about that. About testes. Renee. Get, getting jammed in a table. <laughs> can I Not just, just about testes. Can I just go back a step? Were they, uh, were they having a throwdown with the masseuse? Yeah. Client. Sorry, did you listen to any of <laughs> no. that call? Uh, I don't. Right. <laughs> um, he, <laughs> so he didn't stop. He kept going. Finished. And then they went to the hospital, and his testicle had swollen up, and it was all blue, black, but and blue. And blue. No. That's enough. <laughs> no. But that, she started by end. saying they were Testy having a chat. sesh on a massage table. Yeah, I was asking. You missed that was part. it the client? No, was it the client? Like, yeah. was it a couple that owns a massage table? Oh, who cares? It was a couple on <laughs> a massage Christ, table. Christ, get off me today! You're asking silly questions. <laughs> Mum and dad are on one. <laughs> no, not, not on, dad. N- not Mum. on one. Hello, just, Scotty. She's not paying attention to the Morning. job. How are we? <laughs> oh, there we Morning, go. Scotty. Was it you <laughs> or guys. someone you know? No, unfortunately, it was me. Uh, Uh-oh. Met a lovely lady. Um, we had some special times. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she hit me on the end of the penis. <laughs> she bit. Oh. oh. That's not ideal, did she is it? Be, did she beat you? Did she bite you deliberately? <laughs> what a stupid like, question. Did she think that that was a fun <laughs> thing to do? I'm not sure. It definitely got me going. Um, oh! <laughs> got, you liked it? As in? You no, liked it? as in? You jumped? I was. <laughs> I jumped. Yeah. Jumped. Okay. Yeah, you would. Was, was there any... Um, sport in the Olympics, I would have won gold. Was there any, um, was there any <laughs> bite marks? <laughs> uh, there was, actually. So, the next day, uh, I looked and it would, was bruised. At the oh. end. Wow. So Did she say sorry? As well, <laughs> uh, she did. Okay. Uh, she didn't realise that she did it, and mm. I'm not sure what exactly happened. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah, I had the. Remember, oh. Yeah. The person is there, you go for dinner first so they're not hungry. Mm. Uh, I think that some people would think that's a thing, though. Well, like, I mean, okay. I don't mind an ear nibble, but not the. Yeah. Not mm, a nibble, want, nibble, nibble. Nibble no. on Nobby's nuts. Nibble. I don't want Jaws <laughs> having a crack. Bloody hell. <sighs> Ow. Wouldn't you do a, uh, just to test the waters? Why are little blokes in, that got hurt in that? <laughs> just, you know, just a little taste test. Just a little, just a yeah. little bite. I don't think we're biting. I remember I had that friend no. of mine that lit a candle to make it that all romantic. That was the story I thought you were going to tell before. <laughs> all romantic. And then the doona. <laughs> Caught on, caught, caught on, on fire. fire, and then they're in a, an inferno in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Did they finish the set before they put the fire out? He won't be able to tell. It was a friend of his, Lauren. It wasn't oh, Clint. Someone he knows. Friend no. of his. Yeah. No, I yeah. think there was. No, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but, do you know what? That's where the story is. It is just a great gone. story. Ten a great to story. seven.
to celebrate 100 shows on Nova. And we have to say a massive thank you to this lady for listening to the show, Jo from St Kilda East. G'day, Jo. Morning, Jo. Hi, how are you? Hey, Jo. How are Hi. you feeling, Jo? She uh, is a little bit nervous. Shit yourself, Lauren. Oh, don't be nervous. <laughs> Won't hurt a bit. <laughs> no, um, no. You brought in your beautiful, is it granddaughter? No, da- no daughter. daughter. Oh, oh, no, Jace, Joe, sorry. Where'd Joe. you get that from? So, sorry. Well, Jolene's out there. You'd be happy with that, though, wouldn't you? You'd, you know. <laughs> Morning, Jolene. <laughs> How many kids you got, Joe? I got three. Right. Three mm. kids. Yeah. So, Did you have a favourite? No. <laughs> They're all the, my favourites. That's the right answer. Mm, that's a lie, is. Joe. I've got three kids. <laughs> so I know that's a lie. It um, changes, Dave. It really does. <laughs> it does. $100,000, a lot of money. It is <gasps> a lot of money. What would you do with it? Well, I've been having that discussion over and over again. Um, uh, I would probably share the love like we talked about yesterday. Um, I'd like to be super selfish and keep it, but yeah. Yes, be selfish, Joe. Okay, well, you've got a one in 120 chance. It's actually pretty good odds. Better than than a lot of competition. Better than Lotto. That's right. What do you do to pass the time, Joe? Um, What do you like doing? Oh, I like doing a lot of things. I I I work mm. part time, um, but when I'm home, um, I like to read. I like to believe it or not, I knit. Mm. Um, oh, that's right. You were saying yesterday. Yeah. That you, did you bring your knitting in to just I, pass the time away? No, I didn't. <laughs> into the uh, into the romance novels. Yeah, the no. Mills and Boone. No, and, no, 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 right, no, no. Your thing, and I like thing. riding motorbikes. Shut up! I Sorry, did not what? see that coming. I ride motorbikes in a sidecar, or a, no, no. That you, you what actually what sort of bike are you biking? Well, I haven't got one at the moment, but I had a Harley Davidson. You're sick, stop it! Joe. No. You're, you're the crusty demons. I am. You got leathers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god, Joe! I'm obsessed with you, a Harley Davidson. You are way too cool for this show. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to. If I get a bike again, it's not going to be a Harley. I'm what are you going to go get? for the Honda Rebel? <laughs> you look like a Honda Rebel girl. Do you knit on the bike? <laughs> No, but I take my dog. Oh! Oh, what sort of dog do you put on the bike? I've got a little fluffy thing that looks a bit like a rabbit. Oh. Um, <laughs> I love, Joe, I love and you. And it goes in the front pack and Off cruises you go. around. Oh, my yeah. God. Are you I part of the just... Banditos or anything? Oh, no, 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 no. I could see you cruising through St. Kilda East with so your fluffy I. rabbit dog on your Harley Davidson <laughs> in a front pack. All right. How this works, Joe, <laughs> is we are, you think you know someone, we're going to put you in the soundproof booth. Okay. In there, you won't be able to hear the show. You won't know what time it is. But at some point between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. this morning, there is a golden minute, and that will be worth $100,000. Have, have you got a plan, or are you just going to go with your gut? I'm just going to go with my okay, gut. Okay, well, you, it starts in 45 yeah. Yeah. seconds. Eyes on Brody. Brody. Let's Brody, get you in there. Like, yeah, why don't you come in and get up? So right, this is, come in and get oh, up. Okay. Because so. well, it starts in yeah, you, oh, like yeah. seven o'clock. Here you go. Good it's luck. Forty seconds away, Thanks, Joe. Guys. Get in there. Have fun, Good Joe. Luck, Joe. Hit Good the luck. button whenever yes. you want, Joe. Thanks, guys. We there can't she goes. wait to see you come back in here. All right. Yeah. With a hundred thousand dollars, hopefully. I think you know some. I wow. love her, the Harley Davidson. Mate, I did not see that coming. Neither did I. Knitting and Harley Davidsons are generally not two things that I would have thought go hand in hand, no. but I love them. I'd be terrible at airport security. You haven't been to a Hells Angels meeting. No. I'm sure they're all She's knitting. not a Hells Angel. I'm we sure. don't know. Yeah, we do. We just asked her and she said she's not. No, Bandito, she said. She said she's not in a gang. Mm. But they wouldn't say they are, are they? Yeah, she could they be do. the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be terrible at airport security. I would not call her out of the line. But you, you wouldn't know. need to. Just because she rides a motorbike doesn't need, mean she needs to be interrogated at the airport. Well, if we frisked her this morning, she could be packing. We don't know. She's in a gang. <laughs> She's right. not in a gang. Go for it, Joe. $100,000 on the line for Joe this morning on Nova. Speaking news, we're going to get a full wrap-up of what's going down in Melbourne in a sec, but try and avoid the city area if you can this morning. It not is far four. from here, Jace. Yeah. Just up the road at Jeff's Shed. A big, big, big police presence, some 1,800 officers, because we're hearing reports that 25,000 Victorians will be up there protesting. It's going to be a big day. Well. A big morning. The scenes look very confronting already on the telly this morning. A lot of people protesting against... You know what I find ironic is they're protesting against war, but then if things get violent out there... Do you know what I mean? I'm just a bit I mean, I think the plan is for it to not get violent. That should be the plan. People have a right to protest, Mm. um, but you can't be violent. So So there's a huge police presence. I know, but I just just saw some footage then, someone in the face of a cop just screaming at him, like right up close. And it's like, do you think that's really going against your message? There's definitely troublemakers um, that 
go to these things yeah. as well. I'm like, come on. There's better ways of doing it. But uh, look, avoid the area if you can. Clint's got all the details. And please be safe if you are in the area. Joe from St Kilda East is playing for one hundred thousand dollars. She sure is. She is in the soundproof booth, mm. but we've just put some headphones on her to check in. She's you been bored, in there. Joe. She's been in there for nearly fifteen minutes. That's Hi, right. Joe. Hi, guys. How are you going in there? Yeah, not bad. So, if you've just tuned in, Joe has a big buzzer next to her. She can push it at any moment between now and nine a.m. If she hits it in the minute that is worth $100,000, she'll be walking out of here with very heavy pockets. Now, Joe, a lot of people that have already given this a crack have said they've had spirits come to them in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. They've checked out the tarot cards. You're, you're laughing. Obviously, you have not experienced the same. <laughs> um, do you have a certain time you're working towards? No. Look, sitting here, you lose track of time. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah no. Nah, I'm just going to go with it when I... Yeah, when I feel like just the go time's for right. it. Or you get yeah. bored, go with your get bored, That's hit the button. It. That's yeah, what right. I'd say. When you've had enough, <laughs> just don't go past 9 a.m. because no, we, we, yeah. we we've we've got to get out of here um, today. Yeah, I've got, I got meetings. <laughs> <laughs> giving you some good books to read there, yeah, Joe. What do you got? Yeah, they have. Um, Tom Hawkins. Oh, that's a good book. Yeah, yep. and I listened to your interview with him re- recently. Yep. Um, I love Harry Garside. Oh, yep. I listened to your interview with him. Well, you pretty much read the books, yep. What amazing guy. He was after his... You know, yep. defeat. I, he was just awesome, mm. and I haven't even heard of Stoic and Love, so maybe I'll have so a I look at that one. Oh, there you go. More from Joe's book reviews coming up shortly. <laughs> Are we giving <laughs> her a start. saucy love? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. We've given her a love story. Ooh. <laughs> Get ready, Joe. Hit Thanks, that button guys. with some force this morning. All right, okay. sometime between now. I reckon she's going to go soon. And nine a.m. A hundred thousand dollars up for grabs on Nova. 17 past 7 on Nova 100. Good morning. We are doing a thanks to What If. It is Aussie for travel. you got Jason Lauren, Clint's here as well. And keep avoiding the city if you can. Huge protests going on outside the convention centre. I can see all the helicopters out there yep. over the protests. Police choppers are up. Uh, and there's a lot of police like, in attendance. Look at the police cars. Look at the helicopter. Oh, my God, there's a man with a galah on his shoulder. There's a man who just got out of his car on Clarendon Street right outside our office. I swear I saw it with my own two eyes. I was looking out the window. Did you get a picky? Oh, I tried and I couldn't Didn't get happen. there fast enough. No, but I've got my eyes a on galah. the car. He got out of the car. He was driving a blue car. He stepped out of the driver's seat with a bird on his shoulder. <laughs> like a, what, is it like a, a pirate. Is it a galah? Is that what they're called? Yeah. A pink and Could be a red and white A lorikeet. Thing? Lorikeet. No, lorikeet's blue, isn't Poor it? thing couldn't shake him. He must Don't have went know. to Corumban Sanctuary. Corumban <laughs> on the Gold Coast. He's come all the no. way home and that bloody oh, bird won't get off his shoulder. Can you drive with a bird on your shoulder? I'm right. really impressed by yeah, that. I think you can. Anyway, I'll be just staring out the window for the next half an hour waiting until he comes back. Great. Jason Lauren, we know that love comes in all shapes and forms. It turns out finding love is a real adventure as well. Not just on the apps, which is probably the now traditional way to find love or hook up with someone. This couple found love at the blood bank. Oh, that's a nice spot to find love. Their names, Heath and Sarah, and they've told a current affair. That's well, where Heath all the told, good stories Heath are. Heath told a current affair. Mm. This one bird, Sarah, walks in all jolly, all giggly, all smiley. I always say she's got the best smile in the world. You could say love runs in our veins. Oh, that's a bit cheesy, Heath. So he was lying there giving blood and she walked in anyway. So they regularly well, I mean, donate blood. They've met giving blood alongside that. each other and now they sync up their appointments and they're a couple. I mean, it says a lot about a person. You know what I mean? They, they're, you're a good they're person donating if blood. you're giving blood. Or you yeah. just like Clint, free cookies. You, you give blood. They I've do. done it a couple of times. It's actually a good reminder if you can. Blood and you plasma. Should. God, you've done both and still didn't pick up. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> should do a limb. What do you mean do a limb? Don't well, add a limb. Oh, I need to keep going you an organ donor? I don't know. I don't do, think hey, so. Hey, hey, Do you want his liver? Yeah, I would. You can have my heart, though, Laura. Oh, I've oh, already got your heart, oh, Clint. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, I think that I think people are going back to, like, this Conventional. old school I agree. way. Yeah. People are over the apps. And now I've noticed a few of my single friends, people, like one of my girlfriends who's single and she's hot, a guy walked past her in the street the other day and he turned around and walked back and chased after her and said, hello, introduced himself oh, and they started chatting. 
Now, does he get more points because he actually he broke the mold? Her. They he broke smiled the mold. at each other when they walked past, and he went, "No, I'm going to go back and say hello." And they started chatting. And they're both hotties. But there was definitely that. <sighs> there was definitely that time where it was like for you to come up and do that in a bar, you were looked at as a sleaze. It was like because everyone was using. Yeah, the but apps. no, now people actually want people to come yeah. and say hello. And you know why? Because. AI now with the apps, you don't know who you're talking oh, about. Yeah. Like deep fakes. They no, just no. fully made eye contact. <laughs> is that a deep fake? <laughs> no, just AI. Oh. You know, like, oh, look, he's, uh, look at his banter. He's so witty. And then you meet Steve oh. in the bar and you realise Steve. You don't have a sense of humour, Steve. No, Steve's no, a he's plank of wood. A Go back to your computer, Steve. 13, 24, 10. Where'd you meet your partner? Or maybe you're no longer together, but, you know, you were in a relationship, you met somewhere interesting. Real love. Yeah. True, like, we caught each other up, each other's eyes. Not on the apps. Not on the apps. Not at Crown and not at Boutique. And not at work. My sister Casey met her now husband, Phil, at the Green Mango in Koh Samui because Phil came over to get a photo with me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? It's true. Are you serious? So I'm responsible for their marriage and their two kids. Are because you you're famous. serious? Yeah. He said that's a celebrity. We're on, we're on a family holiday. And he said you're Clint Stanaway from yeah. Channel 9. Has anyway, your family ever thought he's just sleeping with his sister to get to you? <laughs> we, spent the, we spent the next few hours, Phil and I, dancing with some Scandinavians <laughs> up on a podium. So it didn't work out for Casey that night. But good morning, Casey. It's worked out for you now. Yeah, good on you, Casey, for sticking around for day two. I didn't know that. How's yeah. that? Oh, oh, my, that's hilarious. <laughs> and incredibly embarrassing for Phil. 13, oh, no. 24, 10 is our number. Where did that's you point. meet a love? Give us a call here at Nova. God, I was on one at the Eras Tour when that played. She can do no wrong. When oh. does that tour end? It's shortly. It's still going. Another 20 years. I think it's still going, isn't it? I think it. She yeah. finished, She goes back to London to finish it. Does yeah, she? Yeah, to London's Wembley. where it's at. Yep. I feel like she is going back to London. She to is. It. It's where it wraps up. We must go. We must go. We must. We're not going. Let's be honest. No one's sending us there. Imagine the last night of that concert. It'll go for 12 hours. We go to the London Hotel in Richmond. Just we go in there. We, we shall could, go. We could go. Guys, there. should we put Taylor Swift's final Wembley show on the big screens at the London and have a Swifty party? We shall. Love that we'll for us. we pretend we're in London. Love that. That would be mm. a very different clientele to what it the London really would. in Richmond is used to. Morning, Melbourne. It's 7.30. You're on the air with Chase and Lauren Clint here as well. A huge protest uh, this morning in Melbourne. Lots of clashes with police. Avoid the South Melbourne area or Melbourne CBD around the convention centre there. <laughs> It's, it's crazy. We're going to cross back uh, to the streets very soon. Yeah, it, it, it's, 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 very it's got a bit heated out mm. there, so please be safe. Um, I mean, I, I think that the right to protest is definitely important, but there's always people there that are pushing it and behaving really poorly, which is really disappointing to see because it actually loses the message of what exactly. some people want exactly. to Exactly. They're fighting against war, yet they're clashing with police. It makes no sense. Um, hey, uh, let's change the mood, guys. Let's talk love. True love, real love. People, people are over dating on the apps and meeting yeah. people on the apps. Where are you finding love? People are tricking people on the apps. Everyone's getting catfished. Mm. Is that what it's called? Catfished. catfished yeah. Catfished. So, um, and getting AI. Now people can use AI for their chat. So people are going more traditional, more conventional. I was telling you, a girlfriend of mine walking down the street smiled at a guy. He smiled back. He kept walking, and then he turned around and went, "No, I'm going to chase Hang after on. her." And went and love introduced at first her. Sight. Oh. And they've been chatting. Ever since, and it's going strong? Well, it's just very new. It's only happened last week. God, you wouldn't let her go for a walk down the street again, would you? She's a babe, too. Is That's she? what I mean. He, Keep her indoors. He's handsome also. Philip of the Gilf on 13 24 10. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Clint. Oh, Good morning, oh this is Philip. <laughs> oh, How are you, Philip? Philip, I've missed you. I've missed you too, Clint. What are you up to this morning? Living. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just listening to you guys. Mostly and when you're just listening to Clint, though, aren't you? Well, yes, let's be honest. <laughs> He's got such a lovely voice. <laughs> Philip, uh, uh, not Clint here. Um, how did you oh, meet your God. late husband? I met him in the theatre. He was one of the performers in a local community show. Right. And I was in the audience, and I think the first time was an audience of about five, and then the second time I saw it, it was a full house. And I met him on the second attempt. Seeing the show because I had a girlfriend in the show. Oh. And I went up to him afterwards, or first he came up to me and smiled, and I said to him, uh, you didn't know anything about this. You didn't read the book this show was based on, did you? He goes, no. 
It was a musical adaptation of Albert Camus' The Plague. Oh. So, yeah, heavy duty stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and you uh, fell in love. You didn't throw your knickers on the stage. I was stage about to say, how did you get the, his attention? The plague performance, did you? No, no, no. <laughs> no. You'd be kicked out for that sort no. of thing. All right, got to move on. Let's go to Bailey. She made Fillmore. eye contact with him in the she very did. serious moment of the play. Uh, how did you meet your partner? Bailey? G'day, legend. Hello, buddy. Um, Hello, Bailey. So I met my partner at uh, Baker's Delight. <laughs> Romance. So, Free <laughs> sample? Yes. So... As every tradie does, they you walk in, you need to get bread for sangers for the week to come, <laughs> like working week to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to yep. get the sangers. So I walk into the shop and my jaw drops. I'm like, geez, the bread isn't the only thing I need to buy here. So <laughs> ended up um, getting her number and ne- next year getting married. Hey! Oh, so, so you Just... married the lady from Vegas Delight? Yeah. Oh, my God. Did you say straight away you're beautiful or did you go back day after day after day for bread? Yeah, I'll I'll admit, my face kind of went real red and, uh, yeah, it went on from there. Had a, went out for a date probably a week later, took her to a nice restaurant and, yeah, the rest is history. I love that. See? See, you can really fall in love in random mm. places, not on the apps. You don't need the apps. Just Clint, don't, go and hang outside Baker's Delight. Just don't say that we're a tart. Yeah, and also just don't say I want to buy you as well. Oh, no. You know what I mean? That's no. what takes the shine. Worked for Bailey, though. Yeah, good point. Worked for Bailey. Good point. Melinda and Geelong, good morning. Good morning. Where'd you meet your husband? Uh, he, I was a bridesmaid at a wedding and they had hired his car as the wedding car. <gasps> so he was I, the driver. He was the driver. And at, when did you know? When did you get in the car and go? She didn't oh get my out of the gosh, car. She's a hottie. Mm. <laughs> um, oh yeah, we chatted throughout the day and kind of went, "Yep, okay." Did go you, from there. Here's did a you question. Go home with yeah, you? did you go home in the car that you went to the wedding in? No. Oh. Okay. You know what? Though? A lot of people do fall in love at weddings because love's in the air and you're like, mm. oh, this is so romantic and I just want someone to put their arm around me. And yeah, while we're listening to mm. how much these two love each other. We're all going to a wedding later on in the year. We yes. are. Yes. We're taking our Jane, respective our, partners. Our executive Clint, producer, uh, our old producer. Do we need to put in an email to her and say that um, <laughs> you need to be seated next to a single hottie? Yes. Or you need would to be you like, like to be seated in between me and Chase? We'll no, you safe. need to be on like the hot cousin's table. No, don't be on their table. Just on I'm the I'm quite conflicted. Do you wear a police sign? Is that desperate? <laughs> I Police. think everyone knows he's single. Police. I think he's quite well known. Yeah, and then at the end of the night, we might get a photo of some young lady putting the salt sticker over you. It's like those retail spaces on Bridge Road that have been sort of decrepit. And- oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're not like one of them. Discount at all. Not yet. It is not yet. just gone. I mean, the wedding's in December. So. The clock is ticking. Jason Lawrence. One hundred thousand dollar minute. Uh, good morning, Melbourne. Joe from St Kilda East is our contestant this morning for the $100,000 minute. There is a special minute inside the show between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. this morning. We're calling the golden minute. Joe is sitting in a soundproof booth outside the studio. If she hits the buzzer in front of us during that minute, she wins the money. She looks close. Let's uh, let's cross to an hour. Joe, How you, you there? in there, Joe? Hi. How are yeah. you feeling? You bored? Um, not bored yet, but it's that... You know, thing between patience and impatience, like, mm. you know. Do you have any just, idea how long you've oh, been in there? I have no idea, and I keep looking out at you guys, and we're well, trying to look out at you guys in the other studio and go, mm, how long's the song? Oh, it's been days. Uh. <laughs> it has been days. Can we tell days. what time it is? Mm. Surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to know what time it is? Yeah. 7.44, Joe. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. You've oh. been in there 45. Wow. Hey, That's Joe. Time yeah. flies when you're having fun. So we're, we're just thinking, you know, you know, the day's moving on. People got things to do. She's hit it. She's hit it. She's hit it. Oh, get up. She's hit it. I didn't see that coming, man. What a trick. She hit the buzzer. Oh, oh. Seven, is it 7.45? Oh, my God. Joe, get in here. 7.45 when she hit it. Oh, I wasn't it was, expecting that. No, that's not what I was expecting. It what? was 7.44 when we were talking to her. She hit it at 7.45. Is that what we're confirming? Hang on, we're waiting for the well, official okay. Joe. Joe, what I was actually going to say... We were going to offer you some cash to come out. Oh, but the ultimatum. You're a real <laughs> surprise packet, aren't you? Oh, yeah. God, you never know what you're going to get. All right, let's just check the 
official time? Was it 7.44 or 7.45 that she hit the buzzer? They are checking. Checking it the tape. Producer Jizz. I think it ticked over to 7. Official time, 7.45. Okay, 7.45. There you go. Joe, how are you feeling? Uh, fingers crossed. Okay, let's cross our fingers. I've got my fingers yeah. crossed. Here we go. Arms Your beautiful toes. daughter's out there. She's got everything crossed too. Come on, yeah. Joe. Joe, that just really threw oh, me. We're about to bribe <laughs> you to come out. She you are so a surprise calm, packet, Joe. Oh, Reach thank for that you. Button. I hope that's a good surprise packet. Yeah. A great surprise packet. Hey, Joe. Yeah. It was 7.45 and two seconds. Wow. I'm about to open the envelope. You just you just hit the nail on your head when you said, how long are you there? And I was like, no. Nah. Bang. Uh, yeah, she's had enough. What about this? So if you've just tuned in, Joe, hit the buzzer at 7.45. If that is the time in the envelope, Jason will be giving her $100,000. Joe. Yep. What about if we give you a grand right now to get up, walk out, and we never open the envelope? We call it a day. $1,000 oh, yeah. cash. Oh, now you're t- doing tipping game or something like that. Oh, it's, he looks a lot like Tom Woodbridge, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> it's my favourite show, The Tipping Point. Uh, yeah, I know. $1,000. Don't open the envelope. We call it a day and you go now. No. 1500 No. <laughs> no, open it. I came in with nothing. Do you want to bring your daughter in for some consultation? Jolene. 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 Come on, come Jolene. get in here. Jolene. Were you named, was Jolene, Jolene named after the Jolene. show? Jolene. Everybody Jolene. 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 I'm begging. I haven't heard that before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jolene. Hi. Jolene, how good's your mum? Uh, she's being very cute at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah. She's nervous. She Ladies. is very nervous. Uh-huh. $2,000. Oh, $2,000. No. You came here with nothing. Yeah, so. no, that's it. Yep. yep. Are you going to oh stick to God. it? Yep. Three thousand. Oh, <gasps> jace. Three thousand dollars. Ten thousand, and maybe we'll. Oh! Oh! <laughs> what about a Kogan voucher? <laughs> Yeah, nah. Three, I've, got a, I've got a niece that works there. No. Oh! <laughs> Three thousand dollars. And you walk now, or do you want to open the envelope and you could walk away with nothing? No, I'm going to open the envelope. Thank You're going you, to roll Jade, the dice. Yeah, I'm going to roll the dice. Okay, here, here we go. go. <gasps> You've walked away from $3,000. The official time was 7.45. That's when you hit the buzzer. Open it, Jace. I will after the song. Oh, oh. oh my oh. God. So, so, Joe, I'm big. Like, <laughs> Selena Could Gomez. Have Dolly Parton. Selena yeah, Gomez. Jolene? Sorry. Jolene. Sorry. Jolene. Jolene. <laughs> Dolly or I'm. A hundred thousand dollars as Joe yeah. won. We'll find out next. Big morning for Joe from St Kilda East, who's joining us in the studio with her daughter, Jolene. We just crossed to the booth before where Joe was to see how she was going, and bang, she hit the buzzer. 7.45 was the time she hit the buzzer, which means if it says 7.45 on the envelope in Jace's hand, you'll be walking away with $100,000. Gosh, I hope you win it, Joe. You've been a surprise packet from the beginning. Was it just a feeling you had in your waters? In your knees, in your knees. No, it was just when you made that comment. It's like, no, go, boom. That's it. Yeah, right. She went with her gut. We offered her $3,000 to walk. She said no. (laughs) Final chance for the 3K. No, open it. Let's go with it. Her beautiful daughter, Jolene, said she'll buy a breakfast regardless. Breakfast (laughs) is on you, Jolene. But if she wins the 100K, breakfast is on mum. Definitely. Absolutely. (gasps) I'm so nervous. Come on, Chase. Rip the band-aid off. He's opened it. The time that you hit the button was 7.45. The $100,000 minute was 8.34. Oh! <laughs> Never mind. <sighs> oh, You've gone early. That's yeah, all right. We'll, That's we'll, all right. 8.34.
We'll take the 3000 <laughs> <laughs> um, Jolene, unfortunately, that's not how it works. Um, <laughs> Worth a try, though. You never you know. know. You might have caught us in a weak moment. How about you this? guys have been so much fun. I'm sending you ladies to QT Rooftop. QT Rooftop is the only place to spend your spring. $200. Go and have cocktails on us. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you we loved me. meeting you guys. Yeah. Thank and you thanks for listening awesome. to our show. Oh, wouldn't change back in a lifetime. No, oh. Nor would we. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you see a motorbike rider out there with a little fluffy white dog strapped to a chest, that could be our Joe. So you that give her a wave. Oh, my gosh, Joe. I hope you get that Honda Rebel that you're after. Uh, eventually. Yep. Mm. Could have bought it with the 100k, but I know. No. Yep. We'll keep Next saving. Time. We'll keep saving. Could have bought a okay. helmet with the 3k. Uh, <laughs> Joe from St Kilda East joining us on the air. The Thanks, 100k guys. minute. Your Great. chance to play tomorrow on Nova. It's birthday week. It's been going well. I've almost finished the ice well, cream cake. Week. Technically, last week was birthday week. This is a new week. I do a, I do a post birthday week because, like, you know, streamers are still up. Still ending the ice cream cake you sent. Streamers so you have a festival. are still up. Well, it's just Did that, they decorate the house, the kids? No, nah, it's just that poxy little happy birthday sign. How long does that stay up for? I'll probably take it down a month. A month? Mm. You're having a birthday month. Well, I've got to pack up the Christmas tree first. Mm. Um, so I was telling you guys I got a... I got spoiled. My wife... My got, wife. My wife. My wife. Got me an electric bike. Which you've been talking about for a long time. A fat bike? I mean, you couldn't fat have made wheel it... Bike. Fat wheel bike. Sorry, fat wheel bike. <laughs> Wouldn't have made Thank it clearer you. that you wanted one. If she didn't get you an electric bike, because you'd been playing the long game, you'd been talking about wanting an electric bike for like two months. Only on the show, not to her. Oh, so you just very subtly dropped it now. in. It wasn't no, subtle, actually. No, no, no. Yeah. I mentioned it to the kids. Because uh, I knew there'd be a time where Lou would be like, what should we get, Dad, for his birthday? And the kids would be Shirt like- Shirt from Gazman? Well, yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah, got those. Country road for him. Already got uh, the Peter Alexander pyjamas. Oh, yeah. Just get him a get him a bike. When I um when she gave it to me on the weekend, you know when you like you do that reaction like, oh my god, it's amazing. I had to pause for a second because I'm not being sexist, but she got me the ladies' version. Oh yeah, the ladies' bike. It, so you can step over it. Step through. Step through. Step through. It doesn't so, have a top bar. So yeah. if you're wearing a skirt, you don't have to throw your leg oh, all the way over. Oh, I get you. Traditional. Yes. You Traditional. know with the bloke spike, there's like the bar yes. there. Yes. And the this, a lot of people wouldn't realise there's a difference. Well, it, it it looked a little bit Uber Eats driver bike. Did you get spiky ducks too? No, no. Didn't get those. I, and I couldn't use pegs to put cardboard on Did the back Did she wheel. realise she'd bought you? <laughs> Did you ever do that? So it sounded like a motorbike? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Did she realise she'd bought you the step-through bike? She didn't realise that that's a lady's bike. Is it she what did the guy in the shop say? Well, it's unisex. This is the thing. Everything's unisex these days. Thank you, Lauren. And the guy at the shop, I said to Lou, oh, that's that's per- that's exactly what I want. Oh, you got, like, the one I was looking at had a bar here yeah. as a subtle way of going. Or did she got- buy the old man's bike so you didn't have to throw a leg over? Spot. On. Oh, she bought it because of your age. <laughs> she goes, I chatted with the guy at the store, and he said the leg through option's probably the best for someone oh, so your she's age. Yeah, Sexist yeah, she's, and yeah. ageist. <laughs> well, she's not wrong. I haven't seen you lift your leg very high since I've known you. Well, it's been quite some time since I've thrown the leg over, to be honest. Yeah. So how is your lady's bike going? I swapped it for the man. <gasps> oh, I can't wait for you to pull your groin trying to get on it now. That's Throwing exactly what over. happened yesterday afternoon. Oh, I've done a hammy. Oh, back. I back. Should have kept the walkthrough bike. I put one of the kids on the back and then tried to swing my leg over and cleaned up the kid. Oh, you, what, you fly kicked him? Yeah. <laughs> Should have stuck with the old man bike. I was more impressed I got the leg that high. Oh, my God. Are you so happy I'm, with it? I'm on the streets. Have you got oh a helmet with, like, God. dinosaur spikes or something on it? <laughs> no. Or the... um. The zip ties so that the magpies don't swoop you. Oh, that's when I need the zip ties. Mm. She went to get me a helmet from the place, but they only go to large. Oh, you you need, you've got a big box. Big head, big head, yep. yeah. Big bonds, huh? old man. Yeah. Get a stack hat. <laughs> oh, the big bright orange. Did yeah. you ever have the Integra with no, the visor? I did I what? I didn't have the visor. I had the orange stack hat. Yeah, the, the, the visor was extra. That'll get you. Hey, uh, it's just gone six past eight. Crazy scenes in Melbourne at the moment around South Melbourne. And the convention centre um, protesters are clashing with police. It's quite, it's quite violent. It's and nasty. Comfortable to see the, well, it's see the been footage. heated. I think they said it maybe had settled a little bit, but I'm sure it will fire up again. So please be very, very careful if you are in that area, and also avoid it if you can. Yeah, just well, stay clear. Yeah, yeah. We've got some reporters on the scene. We'll cross to them in minutes here on Nova. 
Here we go. Let's go to Josh. Good morning, Josh. Morning. How are you going? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Hey, uh, Josh, I just want to say thank you for the fine work you do. He owns a food truck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> What's your food truck called, Josh? Uh, it's called Smoke and Rack. What's I, it called? Uh, Smoke yeah. and Rack. Smoke and Rack. Smoke and Rack. What are yeah, you? I'm do, scared uh, to ask, but what do you sell? We did like Texas barbecue. Like oh, oh, smoked meat. Yeah. Yum. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Josh, let's see if we can win you some cash. If we won you the money today, what would you do with it? Uh, look, it'd probably go towards my wedding. Uh, oh, get married right. in January. Oh, so, congratulations. Yeah. Best time of Thank year you. to get married. All right, Josh, let's see if we can win you some money today. Do you want an easy question for 50 bucks, a medium question for 500 or a difficult question for $5,000? <laughs> Uh, let's go to the 5000 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. $5,000. Good man. All we're right. serving brisket at the wedding? No, no. We're, uh, I'm taking a day off from that. Yeah, Good fair man. enough. <laughs> I'll let someone else cook for me. All right. We've got a question here. We're about to ask the question. You have three seconds. You'll hear a three, two, one countdown. You have to answer in that time. If you are correct, $5,000 will be coming your way. You ready, Josh? Sure, let's do it. Let's All right. Go. Here comes your five thousand dollar question which year did the very first disneyland open three two uh, 1924 oh. Oh, 1924 is wrong i believe it was it the year either just before or just after the uh, melbourne olympics was it 57 55 55 year before melbourne olympics Sorry, oh. mate. Seventeenth of July, nineteen fifty-five. It's my brother's birthday. <sighs> Not in nineteen fifty-five. Hey, um, hey, you, that day. Uh, mate. Good luck for the winning. Yeah, thank you very much. Good hope on it, you, Josh. Hope it goes well. We will play again this time tomorrow. A bit of a change of pace now. Let's head back to the city. Yeah, a friend of mine and colleague from Channel 9's uh, a Current Affairs, Sam Cucciara, is live on the scene. Sam, um, how's it looking out there? Because from the pictures we're seeing on the television, it's pretty wild. Yeah, morning, guys. It's um, descended into chaos pretty quickly out here. So um, we're at the Montague Street intersection, just near the DFI the Convention Centre at the moment. Yep. Um, and the uh, protesters have uh, clashed with the police horses. There's been a, a little bit of hitting um, and throwing some things. They've got um, those line bikes and um, bike helmets that they've been throwing. Mm. Um, also, tomatoes, paint, that sort of thing, trying to target... Um, any of these delegates going into the uh, expo at the moment. So we're right. going back around to the front at the moment. Apparently, we've just heard that um, the fences, those huge fences that the police have uh, put up to barricade the expo have come down. Okay. Um, and pepper spray has also been deployed. So, so the protesters' uh, behaviour is appalling, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we spoke to the organisers of the main group yesterday and they were sort of saying that it's going to be a really peaceful thing. They don't condone any violence. So it looks like um, there's a real big sort of fringe group of protesters. Um, they've all come dressed in black with goggles. And so these are what they really call professional like protesters. That's, that's, they're that's the, they're the troublemakers. That's, that's the thing. I mean, like Lauren hit the nail on the head before you. Everyone's got the right to protest. And, and the problem right. is... is Why are you covering your face if you're protesting something you believe in? Though? Exactly. Because you're down... You know what? Because you've got nothing better to do today and you're just going down there to make trouble. trouble. They're the people that need to be locked up. Hey, um... Is it feeling unsafe down there, Sam? Um, not at this stage. They've uh, got the right squad here on standby. Okay. So they're starting to push them back at the moment. But a lot of the drivers caught in traffic are really cranky as well. Um, yeah. We've just spoken to one truckie whose truck has been overtaken by these protesters that jumped mm. on the back. Um, <gasps> Jesus. You can't be doing that. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Appreciate it. You can see his report on a current affair tonight. But those disgusting scenes, protesters clashing with police. Shocking. We shocking. don't need it. Steer clear of the area if you can, Melbourne. Obviously, the traffic is a disaster, but um, the irony is, don't head down there if you don't have to. They're against war. Mm. It's that time of year. The magpies are out and they're swooping, which brings us to today's expert. The experts with Jason Lauren. You're special. Specialists who specialise in very special things. This week, it's legendary bird expert, Dr. Gronya Cleary. Let's see if she can identify this bird. Oh, God. Let's hear from the expert. Oh, Gronya. Gronya. Oh, 
Good morning, <laughs> Gronya. We're so excited to see you in our new home here at Nova. It's very fancy. Yeah. We're fancy now. It's fancy. way too fancy because we, we always get Gronya in every year, swooping season. Mm. We know it's Gronya season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is and where Gronya's at her best. Yeah. Gronya, the magpies are out. The magpies are out, and please, people, let's not antagonise them. Let's give them a bit of space at this time of the year. It's just the daddies protecting their babies. And so, yes. what do you, how do you yes, how do you see is. a magpie and go? I don't want you to swoop me. So, what you need to do is respect the bird, make friends <laughs> with the bird, if you will. So, not every magpie gets to breed. We assume you know all birds breed; they all have babies, they all yep. have nests. No, that's not true. And as magpies lose trees, as we cut down trees, actually getting a a good tree to nest in becomes more limited. So there's more competition. So that's why, you know, the magpies can become a little bit paranoid. You know, they've had to fight off the miners. They've had to fight off other magpies. They have their nest. They have their eggs. It's been windy. They've been blown around like hell. They've managed to survive. The babies are still in the nest. So they think that we're going to steal their trees. Why are they swooping? Well, from a bird's point of view, swooping is a is a defense mechanism. Yes. So birds will swoop other birds, such as the miners. And at this time of the year, the magpie might spot you and think you look a bit suspicious. Yes. And they might be a little bit like, what's going on with your one there? She looks a bit dodgy. And they might come down and say hello. Are you meant to, someone, someone once told me you have to look them in the eye, but I feel like they're going to pick my eyes out. Well, we were told when we were young to put fake eyes on the back of our stack hats. Yes. So they look like they keep looking. No, because the magpie's just like, what are you looking at? Why are you staring at me? What's wrong with you? So, <laughs> so if, I, if I got the fake eyes, they'll, what will they do again? They'll fly down and... That's why you say, why have you got fake eyes on the back of your... Are they smart? They are so smart. They are have they? a very good memory, so they remember faces, and they also remember voices. So that's why... It's a personal it, attack. If, so re- the if I'm off. walking, I get swooped one day, and I walk back 24 hours later... That magpie is going to remember me. That magpie will remember you, but what did you do to annoy the oh. magpie? It's a question. But no, sorry, I've been swooped just walking a straight line with my dog minding my own oh, business. Obviously, and recognised boom. you and knew the show. Yeah. Why? Well, they could have recognised you because you gave it a dodgy look, did you? Did you annoy it one day? No. Were you not polite? I do hate birds, though. Uh, there you go. It knew it. It was like you hate birds. Why well, are you victimising us? I'm scared of birds because I swoop you. And there's lots of kids who are going to school cycle. right now who get swooped by magpies. Yes. Oh, so what drama, should we do? The drama. First of all, <laughs> something like less than 10% of magpies actually swoop. Mm. So a very small proportion well, actually gonna, do it. And I've, been do it I've been swooped. I've been swooped. I've been swooped. I've been swooped. Anyone on the team, you've been swooped? Yeah, we've all been swooped. I don't believe it. You might want to check your stats, oh, you mean, mate. You mean actual contact with the head, with the cranium? I've never been hit. No, no. The, the very last resort is that the magpie actually wants to hit yeah. your dumb head. Like the magpie, like, I don't head. want to hit that head. <laughs> You'll hurt me beak. So they'll usually give you warnings by doing little clips, uh, little claps of the beaks, or the call. Should we okay. feed them? Would that make them be more our friends and not swoop us? So this is Should the I thing. walk down the street with a ham sandwich in the air and say, take this, not my head? It's not a seagull, it's a magpie. She it prefers a little bit of cheese. Or that lady like in Home Alone with the bird seed. Feed yes. the birds. Feed the birds. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And That's who Gronya is. <laughs> if, you, if you are having a problem, though, and you are getting swooped, think about providing a small bit of food for the magpie, but make sure the magpie sees you and it knows that you're giving it a little bit of food and then it will associate you right. with a positive experience. So act calm, don't run. Act calm, walk. If you're on a bike, get off the bike, walk. This is only a short period of time that this actually happens. How long sweeping season? Only really till the end of September, sometimes into October. Question. Um, I see the funny little bike riders on Beach Road with their silly little yeah. zip ties yeah. on their helmet. Yeah. Does that actually Should help? kids be putting that on their bike helmets? No, I think they should learn to understand the bird more and um. realise that this time of the year, get off your bike, just walk slowly, give the magpie a bit Hang of space. Hang on, so you're telling me if I get off the bike and walk slowly... They won't attack. The mag- it'd be less likely. The magpies seem to be more drawn to fast moving things. Gotcha. Like things okay. are moving okay. fast. It's like, oh, what's going on here? No. But if you're walking slow, you're less suspicious. So looking. I know that you love getting in the psyche of these birds <laughs> and understanding them. Mm. Can you? So, so c- can you be a magpie for a moment? And I'm riding my bike down oh the street. God. What's going through the magpie's head? Mm. It's like oh, role play. Okay, role play. so a bit of role play. Okay, there she goes. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Hang on, I think I saw her the other day. Yeah, she gave me a bit of the eye. Hang on a sec. Keep moving, keep moving. <laughs> and they kind of be like, you just walk on fast. But they do watch you. You know, they're constantly watching what's moving around in their So Lauren looks up at you. You're the magpie. I Lauren looks up. She makes eye contact. She gives you a filthy look. What do you do? Oh, you give a filthy look. You're after me, babies. Are you looking at my babies? <laughs> Are you looking at my babies? <laughs> and that's... Swoop, click, swoop, 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 swoop. Boom. Swoop, yeah. swoop, bang. You did. It's like the new chick, chick, boom, but it's swoop, swoop, bang. Can you um? 
Gwanya, I love you so much. <laughs> can you talk to the magpies? Oh, I love- mean, what's? can we communicate with the magpies? Send them a, a message of love and, you know, and hope. And- look, you, you'll mock me, but I know it's going to be We're not of- mocking. We're no, not mocking. We're not we mocking. We love you. Not, you're an expert. <laughs> we are not. I'm, laugh- I'm laughing it's, a little bit. <laughs> it's September. I'm laughing with. It's yeah, September. Yeah, yeah. We're not mocking you. We are not mocking you. Well, I don't know. I, I'm feeling a bit mocked, but no, we're not mocking <laughs> you. Talk to the magpie. Let the magpie see you. Don't, yeah. you know, the magpie sees you, acknowledges you, know that you're just passing through. So, yes, I'll be like, I'll start with a bit of orange. I'll be like, do you quit? Do you quit? Which is hello in Irish. And I'll go, how are you going? Are you all right there? <laughs> and try to go from a bit of Aussie slang. Is that good Aussie accent? Do you actually nice. speak you to them? Like, are you mentally oh, speaking yeah. to them no, or are you no, talking? Speak like, you just go, hey, how are you going? Because Grun- they look at you and they see you and they've got a great audio memory. So, so you actually should voices. talk to them. Grun- yeah. Um, really? Just, just, Come on, Melbourne, back me up. You people talk to your magpies as well. Come on. <laughs> 13, 24, 10. Do you, you chat to the magpies? Talk to the animals. Have Grunia, you been switched? Just before we let you go, um, <laughs> Lauren was looking out the window before oh my God, here I on fell Clarendon out the Street, and she noticed someone getting out of, out of their car with something. And in fact, Clint did a dramatised reenactment. Oh, my God, there's a man with a galah on his shoulder. There's a man who just got out of his car on Clarendon Street right outside our office. I swear I saw it with my own two eyes. I was looking out the window. Did you get a picky? Oh, I tried and I couldn't Didn't get happen. there fast enough. No, but I've got my eyes a galah. on the car. He got out of the car. He was driving a blue car. He stepped out of the driver's seat with a bird on his shoulder. Is so, that someone you know, or is it a coincidence we've got a bird lady and someone with a galah walking down the street in the same day? I might know something <gasps> about that. It is you. Oh, my, oh my God, God he's got two, two galahs. Oh, God. Oh, I'm scared this, of birds. The bird lady this, brought birds this, in. Oh, Dusty and Louie. And Lauren, I know you're the birds. Don't, should I, I don't know what to do. Do is, I look it in the can eyes? Can I have this one? Have the yeah, sure. Oh, I don't know about what's, this. What's its name? Oh, it's looking at me. Oh, no, this one swoop. Did you ever see him? Oh, close to my Did you ever see him? Um, oh, come on. Did you guys ever see that horror movie, oh, Birds? Lauren, 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 come on now. Hard and up. <laughs> don't want to touch it. Okay, so what do I do? Pat it? Yeah, pat it back. It's pink, for God's sake. It's a shit zombie. It's a galah. <laughs> it's a flaming galah. It's a flaming galah. It's a flaming galah. It's been a while since I've seen Clint with a bird. Lauren is from the galah. Seriously. It's a, good, it's a good look. It's been Hello. years. It's a good look. <laughs> it's been years. Uh, Gronya, our bird expert, joining ah, us. It's got its wings up. Complete oh. wet bird. If, do you drive with that? Oh, God, you're going to put it on me. Oh, I'm no. going to need a volume oh, after that. You. What is happening? Okay, so, so, so I've look. calmed down. We had some galahs in the studio. Flaming galahs. And I'm not good with birds. No, we I just had um, out the window. We do an experts segment. Now, I kid you not. Mm. Last time we spoke to an expert in dishwashers, and it was fascinating. I was I couldn't stop listening to that guy. You can you can go and podcast it. It's on our podcast feed. I know um, the it dishwasher sounds expert. mundane, but trust me, it will blow your mind. <laughs> I know. I couldn't believe it. It's it's up there as my favorite interview have you we've taken ever done. Your dishwasher blades out and cleaned them since you spoke to the Yes, man? I have. I've re- the way I use my dishwasher now is completely different. I don't rinse anymore. Park that. Today mm. we spoke to a bird export expert. Bird uh, lady. Bird lady. Gronya. 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 Is an expert in magpies. It is swooping season. In that chaotic interview, oh, someone wasn't chaotic. What are you talking about? Someone right. made the claim, "Hey, if you talk to your bird, give us a ring. Yeah. And, and does it stop? Them? Because Gronya, the bird expert, said if you befriend the magpies and you talk to them, mm. guys, they won't swoop you. Have we got the bird phone, lovers? Well, the phones are full. The phone lines a are full. full. Full board of calls. 13, of course we 24, do. 10, if I love like. Melbourne so much. This city is cooked sometimes. Yes, so are we, though. <laughs> really has something for everyone today. 13, 24, 10. <laughs> How do you talk to your bird? Give us an example next. We just had one of our experts, Gronya, who is a bird expert specialising in- She's a doctor, Jace. I know. Oh, here, knows that to anyone. Dr. Gronya Cleary. She's got a no, PhD. she's got a PhD in badgers yeah, as she, well. She studies she badgers. A, how do we know she's got it in badgers, guys? Well, she thanks for the her. question. She showed us her badger tattoo, didn't she? She got her badger out. She Where said, was that? She, she On said, her hip. <laughs> she, so I, I walked into the room and she was pulling- Yeah, flashing her badger. Her pants down. She said, hey- Yo, you know, do I'm doing an Irish yeah, accent. Go, go. Hey, do you want to see me badger? <laughs> and I went, I'm not sure I you do. You didn't even say yes or no. Oh, I just, and then I she undid I'll... her pants and showed us her badger. Her Take badger. She said I got a PhD in badgers.
Um, so here's look, my badger. Here's my badger. That is. show you. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. Magpie swooping season here in Melbourne. And she did ask this. Come on, Melbourne, back me up. You people talk to your magpies as well. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this, but 13, 24, 10, we have a full board of calls of people who talk to birds. Justine in West Footscray, you talk to the birds Hello? and it stops them swooping, I believe. It works. Well, yeah, definitely. I've got two. Um, one I call Sir and one call Maggie. Uh, they've never sued me. Me and my partner used to always little, leave the little bits of meat on the veranda for them and uh, do stupid voices when we called them. But, you okay. know. What Hang are the voices? Yeah, do the voices. We're going to need to hear the voices. <laughs> oh, come on now. All right. I was like, oh, oh Maggie, Maggie, <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, oh, Maggie. <laughs> See, I'm not a bird caller. I'm just some loser yeah, but, in like Westwood. But it works. Magpies. You're not a loser <laughs> in Westwood, Grey. You are no, no, a but bird oh, talker. I'm, I am a bird talker. But the, also the whole neighbourhood kind of talks to this gang of um, birds. Um, yeah, that's why oh, I so they've West... all lost it in West Footscray. Exactly. Right? That's why right. I avoid Footscray. <laughs> let's, go, let's get to Cassie in Hopper's Crossing. Cassie, do you talk yep. to birds? I do. <coughs> I'm going to need a demonstration there, Cassie. I talk to them all the time. Oh, what? you work in birds, with birds, for birds. Yeah, well, wildlife <laughs> rescue, yeah. Cassie, do you speak in, like, human or bird? The native tongue. I speak in human, but kind of like I'm talking to a baby. Okay, give us an impersonation. <laughs> if I'm sitting at a traffic light and see a magpie, I'll be like, hey, little, little bubba, what are you doing? Can you stay off the road? <laughs> I don't want to have to rescue you. <laughs> do you only talk to magpies or all types of birds? I talk to all types. I'm feeling Good incredibly you, uncomfortable. Right, no, I go. love it. I like it too. We're we should to... encourage more of it, Jace. Glenn Roy now. Talia... I believe you speak to birds in Greek. <laughs> Good morning, yeah. Do I've birds got, speak um, Greek? an Alexis parrot and a rainbow lorikeet, and they've learnt to speak Greek and English, okay. but we speak a lot of Greek at home, and so they've kind of picked up a few words. What do they say? Um, so my Alexis parrot, she'll say, like, galo, 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 when you're, like, patting her back and, like, scratching underneath her wing. Um, my rainbow lorikeet, <laughs> will say, like, yasure, like, my dad will whistle and say yasure and he'll mimic it back and say yasure back to you. Of course he does. So you've um, obviously say, got them as pets. So do you speak gr- yeah, to other birds in yeah. the wild in Greek? No, no, just our pet birds, yeah. Look, I'm not. Do you have an aviary? So they've always picked up a few words here and there. They speak a lot of English. My birds bark like my German shepherd dog. Oh, yeah. So they Hang on. Got, they're Look, bilingual. Jeez, like, you're like Ace Ventura. How many animals you got They there? speak Greek and dog. That's, and English. And English. That's impressive. That's I don't bilingual. know why you're rolling your eyes because no, no. you were an Avery guy. Yeah, you were a bird younger. guy. I know. During puberty, I opted for an Avery over a girlfriend. I don't think that you had did you talk? Of did you talk bird? <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, when you go down the Avery route, the girlfriend option quickly disappears, Lauren. <laughs> it dissipates, does it? <laughs> yeah. So you, had an, you were an Avery guy. I was a budgie breeder. Mm. Did you talk budgie? How many budgies did you breed? I had a, I had a couple until the neighbour's cat got it. How many? Oh, I, I probably had 10 on the go. 10? <laughs> did you sell them or did you keep no, them little all? breeding boxes. So little did breeding you keep them boxes. or did you sell no, them? No, no, no. I was about to start like fully Selling going them? into production, but um, oh, the neighbour's gonna... the cat got in there. Chase Hawkins, the budgie guy? Yeah. <laughs> How, what were they called? No, I didn't name them and I didn't talk to them. To okay. me, oh, it's well, all business. Oh, that's completely fun. normal. Yeah. <laughs> just had breeding boxes in the backyard. <laughs> How big was the Avery? Oh, decent size. Half this studio. Have we got another core? Oh, my, my dad built it for me. Oh, beautiful dad. Yeah. He said, I'll do it right around the back of the house where no one can see. <laughs> now, in hindsight, I understand why. So, other kids are playing <laughs> football. And- yeah, he was, he was looking out for me. <laughs> G'day, Alex. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Um, oh, Hi. a lot of your... F- <laughs> Go. What? Go. What's happening? A lot of your friends... Um, like birds. mates with magpies. I love magpies, and I love any bird pretty much. Oh, hang um, on! I, Your friends aren't friends with magpies. Your friends are the magpies. My friends are the magpies. Oh, oh you're yes. next level. Let's go, Alex. Mm. Oh. They visit me at my home. Mm. They come into my backyard. <sighs> I've sat with them in the city and had lunch with them. In the city? Do they follow yeah. your car? You're like <laughs> Naomi Watts in that movie. You know, with the magpie. The birds. The, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, my. Alfred that's Hitchcock. Hitchcock one. <laughs> that gave me nightmares. That's I think I just studied at school. I think that's why I'm still scared of birds. Um, Alex, can you just give us an example of how you would talk to your friends? 
Well, first I would get excited, so I would have a gas and go, oh, hello, Mr. Magpie, <laughs> big boy, what you up to today? <laughs> Where does the conversation go from there? Uh, they don't usually respond. <laughs> And when you say you're in the la- – sometimes you have lunch with them in the city. So are you, like, letting them have a nibble of your salami sandwich or – Of course, of course. I think I've seen people like you in the city. I love Alex. I love – I don't like birds, but I like bird people. Well, and they like birds. I just love Melbourne so much. I know. Isn't it? That was, that was so many, many twists and turns. different people in this Isn't city, including just... the bird chatters. And I like the bird chatters, but they are a unique type, aren't they? They all talk baby to the birds in then baby again, voices. We'll take anyone. Well, no, sorry, you're a bird guy. You build these people was, don't have aviaries. I aver- was a these bird guy. These are birds in the wild. I'm not talking to you them. Why are you distancing yourself from the birds now? You are because a bird look person. at the people who just got on the <laughs> exactly. <phones. laughs> hey, uh, remember to avoid the South Melbourne city area if you can. Those protests turned quite violent this morning. Yeah, which near is the exhibition centre and Crown. Around such there. a shame as well, because there are people like you know everyone's got the right to protest. There are people they're protesting against war. However. Then you've got these idiots. Mm. There's no other word for it. They're well, there extreme. Is, but I, but They're I can't say on the air. Extreme idiots. Uh-huh. They, they are hurling tomatoes. Uh, mm. They are hurling horse feces mm. at police. It's, it's just, just not on. No. No. Like, get out of the city and yeah. get a life. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I hope they Lock all get arrested. Up. I agree. Uh, but avoid the area if you can. Thank you for being a friend. That is it, guys. We are getting out of here. We are. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. It's going to be a bit of a wet one, unfortunately. Tomorrow on the show, though, we will be giving one more person a chance to win $100,000. Tomorrow is your chance to be that last player. And on Friday, Chris Hemsworth is on the show with us as well. Should he we is. give him the chance or is he? Hemsy? No, nah, he doesn't need the 100 k He's, he's, he's right. doing all right, isn't he's he? He's got the new Transformers movie. Also, we're building towards the footy finals. We are indeed. Semi final weekend. A match tomorrow? No. Friday, but a lot of Hawthorne supporters will be leaving on buses. Yeah, is there a train to Adelaide? I don't know. I don't think there's a trains, train. planes, it's, automobiles, it's monorail, buses, cars, monorail. Plane. Very expensive. Monorail. 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 There's definitely Rail. not a monorail to Adelaide. By the way, <laughs> don't go looking that up. Uh, but very expensive flight. So yeah, you're right. Mm. People will be leaving early to watch the Hawks play. I uh, we had to go see the Transformers movie to get the interview, mm. and there was a um, unfortunate scene where a chock top. Ended up on my shirt. It wasn't a scene in the movie. It was a scene in the cinema. It was dead. I can't believe it didn't go in your gob. That's not something I can get Chris to, like, give him the receipt for the dry cleaners. It's I don't think he, he's he a chop top no, guy. Actually, yeah, he doesn't mind ice cream. He's an ice cream. He likes ice cream. He's so always, if I keep eating ice cream, I'll get a rig like that? ice cream in the fridge at his house. Yes, Jace. Okay. Ice cream But I think that's guy. the difference. There's always ice cream in the fridge at his house, where yours is always empty. In me. It's in yeah. me. Yeah. All right. Hey, have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for being a friend. Jason Lauren. Jason Lauren. Wake up feeling good. On Nova 100. Jason Lauren. Follow them on socials. Nova.